One of the fastest ways to improve your search engine ranking on any website, a Wix website, or any other kind of website, is to have a high volume of quality content on your website. That could look like more main pages, or that could look like blog posts, but the sheer volume of, of words on your website, as long as it's relevant to your business and relevant to the search, um, the search terms that people are using, will improve your search engine ranking. So let's talk about how to write quality content on your website. So I've wrote up a short blog article just for um, t tutorial purposes. So we're going to make a fake blog post called Why You Need a Personal Trainer. Remember that search phrases like personal trainer, personal trainer near me, um, fitness coach, all these kinds of things were our main keywords that we're focusing on. So here we're going to use those keywords throughout our content. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. Let me copy and paste this body text. All right, and we talk about personal trainer as a bunch. Now you don't want to be annoying with this. There's something called keyword stuffing where you just say personal trainer, for example, um, a million times in a row. And that's not going to help. Your keywords should still be prevalent in your text. They just shouldn't be annoying. It, the, your, your words should sound natural. So I made this fake one, why you need a personal trainer, with um, a few sections. It comes in at about 800 words. For the highest performing content, it, typically long form content is going to do better. So if you can get over 1,000 words, and really if you can get about 2,500 words, that uh, research has shown that 2,500 words is where your articles are going to be shown the most often and rank the, rank the best on search. So I'm just formatting this a little bit. So there's a couple key things here. Let's talk about titles and subtitles. So on any page, the main page title should be an H1, a heading one. That's HTML terms. All you need to know is it should say H1. And so if we look on our at our actual website, if we go to, for example, the home page, then this text right here, let's get moving, should be an H1. And here you can see our theme is set to H1, heading one. So that, that lets Google know that let's get moving is the main idea of this page. Now, if we actually wanted to change this for um, SEO purposes, we might change this to something like personal trainer in Austin. That lets Google know that that is what this whole site is about because that's the H1 of the main website. Now, we're also selling this as a template, so I'm going to leave it as, let's get moving. Um, so let's get back to our blog. So in our body text here, all of, the, all of our regular paragraphs should be set as paragraphs, and that's again true on main pages as well. But then our headings should all be H2s. That means that this is the subheading for this section, right? So our H1 is why you need a personal trainer. And our heading two, our H2, is personal trainers push you to your limits. So each one of these, each new section has an H2. We can nest headings underneath, uh, underneath each other. So maybe we have a few bullet points about why personal trainers are useful for pushing you to your limits. You know, maybe we say they know your limits. Uh, they know your comfort zone. And we have some sentences underneath those, right, that are associated. If these are subsections of this one, then we can make these H3s, okay? So basically, it's like Russian nesting dolls, right? As long as the subtopics are relevant to this larger topic, you can make these H3s. And you could have H4s underneath that one if you really wanted to. It's rare that you have to go that far, but you could. So let's review a couple things. One, we're going to use heading tags and paragraph tags. See, it says paragraph. So you might be confused, though. What if, what if you're not a good writer? What if you need a little bit of help writing? One useful tool I can recommend is called Grammarly. And it looks like this. It's got a G. If you go to Grammarly.com, this is a tool that helps you um, with spelling, but also with grammar, with unnecessary punctuation, all kinds of useful alerts for, for writing better. Grammarly is super useful. I use it all the time. I have it installed on, on my own browser. So everything I write is being checked by Grammarly. And there's a free account. I just use the free account. 
the paid accounts are probably useful, but I think the free uh, already helps you a lot. Now, another question you might be asking is, I can't think of any any topics for content. So that's an easy fix. Just Google search blog topic ideas. This is going to pop up, um, and there's lists and lists and lists on the internet of different blog topic ideas. So here is 35 ideas, 75 more ideas, 81 ideas, 189 ideas, 120 niches, 87 blog post ideas. On just the main page, on the first page of Google for blog topic ideas, you have 500 different ideas here. So we can look through some of these. Uh, how-to guides work great. It's, it's content kind of like this video. This video is a how-to. Politics, probably avoid politics. Bacon, that's not a good advice. Recipes, uh, some of these aren't that great. Beginner guides, that's, th that's a good one. Frequently asked questions, that's great content. You can see what I'm saying. If I was a personal trainer, maybe I'd write frequently asked questions before meeting your personal trainer for the first time. Interviews. An interview with, uh, you know, this popular personal trainer in your, um, in your city. It's really not hard to think of blog topic ideas. Um, and if all else fails, just go to somebody else's website in your industry and then see what they're writing and see if you can write similar articles, but write them better with more content, uh, make them more personal, more entertaining, make them longer. Uh, that, that's a classic way to do it. I hope this video helps, and I'll see you in the next one.